So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. I kind of got a jump on things this morning uh, before the frost came out of the ground. We've been doing that every day this week, but I ran out to the clearing there, moved some firewood poles over to the wood pile, and I brought a nice red oak log in. But when I was out there, I saw something I was not expecting. Uh, about a month ago, if you're standing in that clearing looking out past the mini cabin, I thought I saw a new home over there. You know, there's a new housing plan out the road, but there's another one, and I can clearly see it uh, from the mini cabin. I was kind of shocked to see that. It's kind of weird, you know what I mean? I go out there, and it's like you're in the middle of nowhere, but now I can see a housing plan. It's probably three quarters of a mile away, and I can only see it when the leaves are off the trees, but uh, man, things are changing. They really are. But anyway, I brought this uh, nice red oak log back with me. This was a dead standing tree. I'm going to make some... Uh, one of the things I want to get out of this is some stickers. I need some stickers for drying lumber. And uh, this will be a nice log for that. We'll saw up a bunch of them. And uh, we'll see what else we get out of it. But first, I got an important business meeting to attend this morning. I mean, it's a can't miss meeting. At the Cracker Barrel. We like to come out here just to get together. Well, first of all, they have great breakfast. And then we can have our meeting, go over things that we're gonna do this week, things that were completed, things we knew made to move on to. And of course, I'm always into our six month goals. I know, and Cracker Barrel's booming here today. We it had to booming. park out back. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah. And they have a little store, so you can always do some shopping afterwards. We were a little late getting here today though. Normally yeah. when we come out, it's kind of first thing and it's almost... Yeah, we can do probably breakfast or lunch. Yeah, we're going with we're breakfast. We're going with breakfast. Can't go Nothing wrong. like a good breakfast. That's right. All right. Melissa and I got back from breakfast a little bit ago. It's uh, warming up quickly. I'll show you what I want to get into right now. Uh, as you know, I've got a new road to the clearing goes straight out starts at the top of that little hill right there well this section of trail here it needs all fixed up and widened out I need to take the sharpness out of this bend right here plus it gets real narrow right in there so what I'm gonna do I got a couple trees I have to take out of here a couple small ones down there this little maple and then this big maple right here We'll have to take these trees down, get the stumps out of here, and then I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Like I said, we have to widen this all out. And I can take fill from that little hillside over there to fill this in, but you can't just widen it out. You know, you can't just fluff that dirt in there and think it'll stay. So what we're going to have to do is clean the topsoil off of here and uh, dig kind of a tow key cut this all down you know we're gonna cut this out up here cut it all down and fill that in and bring it up in lifts and it should make a, a pretty good road at least that's what the plan is I'm not gonna get to all that today but what I'm thinking I'm gonna take these couple trees down this maple right here I'll drop this side right over in that opening, hopefully. And then the big side, I'm just gonna drop straight down over the hill. That's where it wants to go. And uh, we can use the skidding winch sometime in the next day or two to bring it back up. But there's nowhere else to really drop that without smashing a bunch of trees that I wanna keep. So, Let's get started. Well, that did not go as planned. This one did, went right where I wanted. The other one is pretty ugly. We got her hung up. 
and hung up bad. I think what happened was, if you can see, the center is all rotten and it didn't give it enough time to kind of go where I wanted. I was aiming this way about 20 feet and it went right over that way. It's hung up in another maple, sitting right on top of a little dead one there. It's gonna just fall apart once it does come down. But yeah, that's not good, but we have an excavator. So I think what I'll do, I'll bring it up, just knock it off the stump. And then my feeling is it's still gonna be hung up. So this will probably swing down the hill. So I'll bring a chain as well. And uh, you know, if I sit up here, I'll just keep pulling it up the hill till we free that top. I think that's my only option here. Yeah, I'm not even gonna get close to it to show you, but you can see this one here. It's all rotten in the center. That one's the same way. I tried leaving holding wood on this side over here to try to steer it a little bit, but it got close to that center and just went, gone. All right, so we are about to knock the new off the new excavator here. I'm gonna move this one log out of the way and then we're gonna pull that tree off the stump and I'm pretty sure I know what's gonna happen. The bottom of it is going to, uh, it's gonna go down the hill pretty far. That's okay though, because we have a chain. I can always pull it back up, but for now, I just need to get it off that stump. That is priority one and uh, get it on the ground. Actually, I don't like that. You know why? Because that thing's going to fling down. Man, I'm glad I caught that. It's going to fling down, hit that right there, and throw that log up in the air. That's what you call a good catch. I'm not 100% sure that's what was going to happen, but it definitely could have happened. Wouldn't that be something? Big hunk of log come right through the window on the new excavator. All right, let's see what happens here. Didn't go down the hill too far. back away from it a little bit. Actually, I'm going to get on the other side. I'm going to turn around so the uh, so the blades on that side. I don't think I really hurt any of those other trees. There's one dead one there, it needed to come down anyway. Yeah, it's a little better angle, I think. in there. Trying the drop method here. Those top branches are so wedged in a Y up there, I literally don't know if this thing's ever gonna come down. We're getting there.
tell you what, I think this machine is stronger than the old one. You'd think it'd be about the same, but uh, I'm picking this whole tree up basically like nothing. in the bottom. Huh. Huh. That I can cut out of there. <laughs> wow. So yeah, we went from that tree being wedged, the whole top was wedged up there in that Y. So we went from that to it all being wedged down here at the bottom, which is not good, but that's not the end of the world right there. I can cut some logs off of this thing now, get this out of here, and uh, you know I can reach some of this stuff, go down there with the excavator, I can yank that out of there. That's not a big deal. Glad to have that on the ground. I don't like these things. I don't like hung up trees. I don't like rotten trees in the center. Not a fan. the first real work that I've done with this machine I got it maybe I don't even know three weeks ago I got a funny story so I bought this from Messix and they're in eastern Pennsylvania and they delivered the machine and I bought it off of Neil that's who my contact was I met Neil Messick once uh, we went to a open house out there but anyway uh, Bought it off of Neil, they delivered the machine, everything went perfectly, but Neil was going to bring me a hat, well, you know, they're going to include a hat with the purchase of an excavator, this hat right here. Well, they didn't bring it. It wasn't on the truck. So I talked to Neil, I'm like, hey, where's the hat, All right? And uh, he said, I'll get it to you. Well, the next week, Neil paid us a visit and delivered the hat which is very nice of him. Obviously he could have just shipped it, but uh, he wanted to come out and say hi. And we shot a video while he was here. Uh, and I kind of screwed up my, uh, the audio is not great. I don't know what happened exactly. I'm not used to doing videos like that. Like uh, where I just set the camera up and I'm standing with somebody. So I must've missed a couple things. You can still hear it, but we're gonna play some clips from that here in just a little bit, but it's worth the watch. I like uh, Messick's equipment a lot, and I'll tell you why. It's very apparent that they are in it for the long haul, you know? I mean, they've been around forever, but not only that, they keep reinvesting into their business, and they seem to focus on uh, what's really important, not just sales, but parts after the sale service people from all over buy from their parts department and uh so from what i know of them i'm i'm impressed i really am they uh they run a smooth operation i got to tour their facility at their open house it's incredible like it's really something else uh, neil might have done a video on it i'm sure he has in the past if not, I would like to do one sometime, maybe go out there and visit them. But, uh, you know, imagine having eight or ten, I don't even know how many people, taking parts orders and having to fulfill all those each and every day. It's, uh, it's a pretty smooth operation. But anyway, when he was here, 
they filmed a video for his channel just kind of going over uh, some of the equipment that we use here I think you really like the sawmill Neil's very familiar with uh, tractors and equipment but I think the sawmill was kind of new to him I even had him uh, working a little bit taking some slabs off the mill and whatnot so that was cool I like meeting people you know what I mean like-minded people business owners in this this type of work so you have to check out Neil's channel I'll put a link to that in the description but uh, like I said he has a video I'm watching what I'm doing here I don't want to scratch this new machine he has a video there on uh, everything we do around here and some of the equipment and stuff, but uh, Neil's videos are different than mine. I do videos basically on what I'm doing around here and when I'm doing it, where he has more how-to, more technical stuff about different equipment, uh, new products, a lot of new Kubota stuff. I saw Kubota has a new uh, utility vehicle with like a long bed on it. I don't know what model it is. I don't know why someone had done that sooner, but it looks pretty neat. But you can find all that stuff on Neil's channel. And uh, good guy though, good company. I'm gonna clean up some of this brush right here and then we're gonna try, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but I'm gonna try to pull that top out of that cherry tree there. I'll get it, but it may take some chainsaw work at a later date. I'm telling you, the 57 is the perfect size for me. A lot of people thought I would get the 80. I just love the balance of the 57. there's like three sizes of excavators there's you know like an 8,000 pound machine for digging lines around buildings and you know you can dig stumps and stuff it's a nice size machine easy to haul around behind a three-quarter ton pickup truck you got that size then you got this size right here which is I don't know close to 13,000 pounds and then big excavators that's really I don't know, they make them all sizes in between, but that's the way I see it. Now, if I can get a hold of these things, towards myself that's how the machine is the strongest but I think I'm gonna to have to get over to the side so I can grab it with the thumb if we can get these out of here then we're gonna to try to get that stump out we'll get it out but I'm telling you that one is gonna take some time that's a big stump for a two for one here we got 
got it. Just need to get this stuff out of the way. Which, quite honestly, right beside the trail here is probably the best spot for right now. say you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet we are definitely making a mess here side the other one's gonna roll down the hill all right we got them This tree's got to go. We might as well just take it right now. Get that one out of the way. Stump. We 
quite the challenge, really, but I got it out. I think tomorrow I'll bring the skid loader out here with the grapple first thing in the morning, and we'll move this stump all the way back by the clearing. I've got a stump pile kind of out of the way back there, but this is kind of what I'm after right here. I'll have to dig this all out like that all the way through here. I got a couple small trees to come out and bench that down, get it rolled in as best I can. Then I can start taking dirt from that little hill, that little rise back there and bring it down in here and build it all back up to this level right here. And uh, we should have a pretty good road. But anyway, I will report back tomorrow morning. Right now, I'm gonna play some clips from uh, Neil Messick's visit the other day. Uh, we're trying out a new guy here today. I'm not used to working, Mike. You're not used to working. I'm like I'm one of those soft hand computer guys most <laughs> of the time. Most of you are probably <laughs> familiar with Neil from Messick's Equipment. And he came out today because you forgot something. I did. Want to tell him about it? Uh, you know how important it is that every customer gets that like dealer hat when they buy a new piece of equipment? I neglected to send one along, so I'm here now. And he brought a hat. It's a four hour <laughs> drive, right? It's a four hour drive, but yeah, some wrongs have to be made right, so here I am. Yeah, so we've been wanting to get together, have Neil come out for a day, and uh, I just bought the new Dash 5 excavator. We're going to go over some of the new features and options on that. And I'd also like to learn a little bit more about Messi's. Last week, I got the new Dash 5 Kubota excavator and I bought it from Neil, traded the old machine in, and what happened to my old one? <laughs> so, uh, one of your viewers um, had, re you, you had a sequence here going, right? Yeah. So the, the first video was the old machine leaving before the new machine had even shown up. Right. And we had the machine back to the store, sitting on the yard, and somebody who watches your videos knew that that machine had left, but didn't know where it went, drove through our yard and saw it sitting there with your Outdoors of the Morgan sticker on the back of it, and uh, nearly bought the machine immediately. Really? Before you even posted the video that the new one had arrived. So, um, and nice guy. Super nice guy, wonderful family, super cool to have it close to home. That's good. And cool that the guy's got a great story to go along with the machine too. We probably could have sold it another four or five times really? after the new one arrives. So yeah, um, yeah. Well, people have a good history on how it was. Uh, it's you know. equipment has a story too. Like you know, the, these machines become part of our lives in a way, and to be able to have kind of that backstory with your equipment, right. I think is really cool. So yeah, it's also a great home. And normally, in most cases, when somebody bought the machine, they paid for it and they use it, they take pretty good care of, you know, yeah, normally. You take great care of your stuff. And, and I mean, people see that on video, but you can also tell who's a good good operator of their machine. Right? Yeah. And that's that's obvious in the way that you run your equipment. You sell, uh, you've sold some equipment to Gary Equipment Rental down in uh, near Deep Creek. Yeah. Yeah, I know those guys down there because stuff that I can't haul down there, I rent from them and I saw your stickers on them. Good, good guys, but we talk about uh, uh, rental, you know what I mean? And some of the issues that comes up when people rent equipment, not yes. familiar with machines and damages and things like that. Matter of fact, at some point we're going to do a video, I'm going to do a video with those guys on proper way to rent equipment and what to expect and things like that. There's a lot to learn there. Yeah, there is. But back to the Dash 5. So I mentioned in my videos before, the Dash 4, great machine. I did not have one single issue with it in 500 hours. Most construction equipment you probably wouldn't expect to. Is that fair to say? It's made to be run and it's made to get, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand hours in this equipment. So yeah, yeah. 500 hours, we'd be pretty disappointed if you had a problem. Right. So I went over what I thought were most of the changes on the Dash 5, the cab, what else? Cabs wider, uh, quieter. Yeah. The controls on your right hand side are completely redesigned. Uh, so you have a uh, new buttons, which I think have a great feel to I them. I do too. With an additional width of the cab, it's all laid out nicely on the right side. Yes. Though. Big yeah. enough that you can push them with gloves. Right. Um, and then the screen on the right hand side does a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Some additional storage I noticed as well. So yeah, and yeah, I love. <laughs> I miss things. <laughs> we all do. 
Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that was one thing I picked up when I watched your delivery video. I was like, I forgot that was there. Did you know? I didn't even know, but here, there's actually storage right in here as well. Uh, probably a surprise to me. You have to lift also. this door up, but it's nice. You can put it, this flips up, your battery's right there. You can put a couple chains or whatever. Right Learning there. something here every day. Yeah. <laughs> how many, how many excavators do you think you sell a year? Uh, 200 plus. 200 plus? Yeah. How's that compared to skid lighters? How many skid lighters? Oh, uh, this ebbs and flows, but three, three fifty. Okay. Yeah. Now we're coming on the back side of like an incredible, crazy boom for all this COVID nonsense, right? Right. So some of those are not like long term. Not a real good base numbers. This is not how, right? This is not normal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a crazy ride here for the last two years. How, how's the market right now? What are you seeing now? Uh, mixed bag. Um, a lot of your say, call it fun money. People's fun money is not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the tractors that are bought for say, not hobbyist type uses, we don't sell quite as many as what we used to. That's expected to me to a point, again, it's just that the COVID stuff wasn't sustainable. Right. We're back to kind of like a 2019, 2020 kind of. So that's probably level. reflected in the used market as well. Maybe the used market. The used market softened a little bit. There's a lot more to pick from out there now than what there used to be. Right. Um, so yeah, it is, you know, we had a seller's market here for the last two years or so, and that's changing now. Right? Yeah. It's, it's kind of going back to normal. And we're seeing that reflected from our manufacturers too. So. Um, you're seeing a lot more like program money being spent and incentives offered mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff to start to kind of get some of that equipment moving again. They they have to compete again, right? Right. Uh, and this isn't Kubota specifically. I mean, this is everybody that we deal with. What's the most popular size excavator? The 40? Uh, so it varies, but for us, the 40 and then the 80, actually. We jump really? right to 80s after that. Okay, so the 80, in my opinion, great machine, more reach, more power than this. But to me, it feels like it would be better suited uh, like for sewer line work, utility work, things like that. Right. These are balanced beautifully. And, and like I work on some steep hills and I don't know, it's just, it just feels really nice. Yeah. This Housing side. is huge for us. Okay. So that's where a lot of our 80s go sewer out. Sewer lines, what, all sewers, that. foundations, that kind of stuff. I gotcha. Yeah. And what size skid loader? 75? Uh, mostly 75s. 97s, we... Are, Probably, I can run the numbers through my head here. If we do 175s, we probably do 65, 97s. So looking at it now, I I love the 97. I'd hate to go the other way, but the 75 I could haul without a CDL. Yeah, 97 you can't. And I rented a 75 for the property down in West Virginia. It's a beast. You know what I mean? They, they're all very capable machines. You've been in a 75 3 yet? No. Yeah. But all the stuff you love about this is in oh, that machine. I know, oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for a 97.3. More than likely, next model year, I'd suspect that'll happen, yeah. right? That's how things usually go. But um, yeah, the 75-3 just came out a few months ago, didn't it? A few months ago, and it is, oh, they, they nailed it. I mean, yeah. it just, again, it's, I don't often get excited about new models, but there's certain ones that just, when they hit it, it's cool to see, like, customers recognizing what the company has right. done and we benefit from some of that turnover in machine because there's a, a reason to get the new one right and they did that with the 75 .3. very good how long has uh has messix been around so we my grandfather started our dealership in 1952 okay. um so do the math on that we're 70 odd years at this point yeah. um so i'm third generation and how many locations do you have five five yeah so we're a big circle in south central PA. How many family members are still involved with Messick? So work? my grandfather would have started the business. My dad and uncle will run it for years. Um, and you'll still see them around periodically. And then there's five of us in the third generation. Okay. One of the things, in my opinion, that sets you guys apart is uh, you're not afraid to reinvest in your business. <laughs> and I noticed that when I yeah. visited your Mountjoy location with the parts, it's out of this world, the way you have everything set up out there. Because uh, you see a lot of companies, you know, everyone wants to save money, but you have to have a smooth operation. You have to make that investment if yeah. you're going to be around for 70 years or whatever it is you guys are around. And there's, you could say, there's an investment from us. Obviously, I'm in this for the long haul, right? Yeah. I'm not going anywhere, so I'm looking at what, what company are we leading and running here for the next 70 years if we manage to do that or whatever. Yeah. Um, and efficiency, too. Like, 
you know from investing in equipment out here, mm -hmm. right? The right equipment makes all the difference in your productivity and your efficiency, and that's echoed for us as well, right? There's yeah. there's some razor thin margins in a lot of this stuff, and for us to be able to be efficient, profitable, and all those kinds of things, we have to have the right facilities, the right systems and people. And right. Kind of I was very impressed with your uh, that Mount Joy operation. I'm telling you, that's it's like nothing else. <laughs> it's it's very nice. Yeah, I was, I was shocked. I knew it was big. But same thing, you're talking about like looking at the log splitter. <laughs> like you don't realize until you get there, it's like, man, this place. So you is start cool. walking the How steps. How many square feet do you have there total? Our Mount Joy store is 210,000 square feet. That's incredible. So it's two Home Depots or a super Walmart, basically. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for an equipment dealership. So it is a hub store for us. Right. Um, but, you know, we've come to service a wider area all the time. I mean, I think you were mentioned the Garrett Equipment Rentals yeah. before. I mean, they're four hours from us right. and would choose still to come and buy their equipment from us. Um, yeah. So we reach further away from home all the time. Um, and YouTube and the internet and online has brought us parts customers from around the country. Yeah. Um, so we, we use that Mount Joy facility for fulfillment of all those kinds of things. Very cool. So if you guys aren't familiar, you probably already are, but if you're not, Neil's channel, you got to check it out and you have to subscribe. See, I do videos more on just what I'm doing around here and when I'm doing it and along the way you'll kind of see what different you know equipment's capable of and things like that where your channel is more technical you have some technical stuff try to be you have a lot of uh, how to kind of stuff how mm -hmm. to operate different things and just all around good information but uh, Neil's channel I'll put a link to your channel in the description how long have you been doing YouTube uh, pushing eight years. Pushing eight years. Yeah, I'm about six and a half or seven years. Yeah. And how often do you upload? Uh, it's ebbed and flowed, but I average two a week. Two a week, yeah. And so any new products that are coming out, and uh, I just watched one the other day on the, uh, Bama, is it Bama Light or Bama Light? Bama Light stump grinder you had on the little SCL. Yeah. How do you like that setup? I, it's for the right person, you know? It, it's. I always look at this and try to say, how can somebody get more utilization and more productivity out of a equipment investment, right? Yeah. And so that is a really affordable, very productive option to make your stand on track loader a, a stump grinder, right? And if you compare that kind of setup to what it costs to go out and buy a standalone stump grinder system, um, you, you've now got great value, right? If you're making money with that machine, you could be more profitable and productive. Right. Um, and so we look for that kind of stuff from a video perspective because I think it's interesting and helpful to people that are in that industry. Um, but it's also what our dealership is looking to do for our customers, right? Yeah. I mean, we, one thing that I think makes us a little bit different than most equipment dealerships is, well, I'm an orange guy. It's kind of what I do for work. We at Messix are a customer-oriented company, mm -hmm. right? So I sell several major lines of equipment and enough attachments to right frustrate all of us frankly <laughs> that's something we need to but, do some but it's solutions right yeah that's something that we need to do sometime and i said uh, i'm gonna get with those guys from garrett and maybe you as well but equipment rental is a huge option there is so much cool stuff out there and i don't mean cool like hey this is going to be fun to run cool and productive equipment that people aren't going to make a one-time purchase for something that you're going to use once or twice a year and I think there's a lot of new stuff over the last 10 years that came out on the market just to make life easier that people don't even know exist. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's what you go and you look at the list of companies that we deal with and it's like this little company over here that manufactures this really specific thing. Right? Yeah. And for that application in that industry that they know so well, it can be like a game changing piece of equipment. Right. And while we love our major tool carrier type companies, uh, those kinds of applications are too niche and too small for them to worry about. Right. But that's the kind of interesting companies that you like too. Yeah, I do. Right? I do. Um, it's just, it's, there are always cool people to meet and great people to work with. Yeah, and people just finding, they discover a problem and they find solutions yes. for it. And it's just cool stuff. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. good stuff. That's what makes this industry so fun. Yeah. But anyway, Neil, I really appreciate you delivering my hat. <laughs> and uh, by the way, like I said, there'll be a link to Neil's channel in the description. Purchase, purchase of this machine was effortless. Uh, we got together on the old one, gave me a fair price for it, fair price on the new one, done deal. And oh, your driver, out of this park. Great guy. Thank you. And, and he, I mentioned in my video, he had a piece of rubber over top of the thumb on the machine 
which that thumb, the first time I take it in the woods, is going to get scratched up. But it just shows it takes pride realizing you're hauling an expensive piece of machinery and that that little extra bit just goes a long way. That sticks out in my head like this guy cares. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he did a really nice job. I thank you so much for that feedback because that video, I bookmarked it, I posted it, and I sent it right to him. Because that hearing that kind of stuff is what makes people want to do it for the next guy. Yeah. Right? It's just that we need more positivity like that yep. nowadays. Right? Everybody complains <laughs> when do. something doesn't go right. We need to recognize when people do a great job. And yeah. uh, he did. I mean, yeah. he's. He drove like four and a half hours to get here, came in with a smile on his face, boom, bang, done, unloaded, <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. But I appreciate it, Neil. Absolutely. But thanks always. for coming out, and uh, I'll be in touch. Yeah. Thanks.